a non-charged 5D tachyon with imaginary mass called variously Cherenkov or Hawking radiation at faster than light or variable speed of light respectively is the quantum responsible for transmitting the force of gravity within 4D space-time. Hyperspace is a zero-point energy field of tachyons extending beyond our local universe above light speed that within the local universe below light speed causes seemingly attractive gravity by having an actually repulsive effect that is chronologically opposite the standard arrow of entropy. What is entropy, order breaking down into chaos, in one temporal direction, is gravity, chaos forming into order in the opposite. And what appears to be attractive gravity is just repulsive entropy in reverse. Tachyon fields aggregate into torus shapes around gravity wells. Thus, individual tachyon quanta themselves may be approximately toroidal as well. When sub-quantum scale tachyons aggregate into fields with influence on larger matter energy quanta, they carry the force of gravity because as these tachyons push against these larger quanta, they have the result of causing the quanta and all larger physical structures to be attracted toward one another. This is because when you push against something else, if you reverse time, the effect will instead appear to be attraction between you and it. So we have established that a tachyon must travel faster than a photon. If a photon travels, on average, at the fixed rate of c, one Planck distance per one Planck time, and a tachyon travels faster than the photon, then let's say the tachyon is traveling at c squared, or light speed squared. Now, imagine a race between these two quanta, where the destination is some distant star system, let's say two light years away. So, of course, the photon, being the quantum of 4D light, will take two years, Earth time, to reach the destination. The tachyon, being the quantum of 5D light, will travel the same distance in a span of time equal to the square root of two Earth years, or else will travel two times the square root of two light year distances in only the duration of two years of Earth time. There are at least two caveats for tachyons being the quantum of gravity. These two are intrinsically interwoven into the original definition for tachyons, being based on Einstein's relativity. This states that tachyons must always travel faster than light, and cannot ever slow down to below the speed of light. And this is because of Einstein's equating C with, ostensibly, an asymptote approaching infinity, and his belief that, at C, time becomes so relative to velocity that it seems to stop, such that, 
from the point of view of a photon traveling at light speed, any faster perception than itself would appear to be moving backwards chronologically. The second stipulation dictates that all quanta and any more massive objects at FTL must thus be moving backwards in time. Now, this first stipulation that tachyons cannot cross the light speed barrier is apparently proved false by demonstrable VSL, variable speed of light, that indicates that light speed is only a speed limit disobeyed by perhaps one half of all photons and that this one half therefore tend to side slightly more toward breaking this speed limit by going FTL faster than light. So if photons can accelerate to FTL and thus cross the light barrier then why should tachyons, which are ostensibly only radiation traveling FTL already, not also be able to do so by slowing down to C or below? The second premise is also difficult to determine because Einstein uses C as the fastest possible velocity in the local universe, which seems to imply that anything moving FTL necessarily must be traveling backwards in time. This belief seems to be based on C serving as a kind of point in physics like zero on a number line, where the negative numbers below zero count down to it and the positive numbers above it count up and away. This mirroring principle of Einstein's relativity remains pure metaphysics, since there is still no way to physically test this process, as it would involve exploring a realm of energy that must, though as of yet only may or may not, exist at FTL speeds. So we can say that, ultimately, observation and experimentation will determine if these limitations to the definition of tachyons necessarily hold true in reality. However, the question remains if tachyons may be the quantum of gravity even if these stipulations are not met. For example, can tachyons still travel backwards chronologically if Einstein's mirroring principle proves inaccurate? A tachyonic antitelephone that receives messages sooner than they are sent might still work, but there would also be a time barrier at zero time which would seem to prevent the paradox of an event causing itself. Does VSL cancel out temporal mirroring significantly to disprove reverse chronology tachyons being the repulsive quantum of apparently attractive gravity? The solution may be in Einstein's proposition that to travel up to C would increase an object's mass asymptotically toward infinity, which seems absurd considering what little mass, asymptotically zero, a photon itself has. This premise implies that the entire universe itself is the asymptotically infinite mass object accelerating toward light speed. However, this means that, above C, for an object to slow down to below C would require the same infinite mass asymptote effect to occur in order to satisfy Einstein's mirroring principle.
This, in turn, allows that a hyperspace of tachyons can exist FTL, and that this energy may be gravitationally pulling the local universe outward from beyond C. However, it still leaves open the question of if tachyons are also responsible for the visible effects of gravity inside our local universe below light speed. If tachyons, by definition, cannot slow down below C, then how can they be said to exist inside our local universe, which is bordered by the speed of light? If they cannot exist below light speed, then how can they be the quantum of gravity within space-time? The effect of gravity begins at a very small scale, such that 5D tachyons, being smaller and faster than even now known 4D ZPE, zero-point energy, would need to be present in massive amounts to be able to account statistically for the gravity of even a single atomic nucleus. Einstein's equations also served to prove that if you split an atom, a proportionally exponential amount of kinetic energy will be released. This otherwise pent-up or potential energy that is usually tethering the atom together is gravity and it is only when this force is cancelled that the atom's nuclear bonds break. So it is this potential energy that is the measure of the force of gravity even on a small scale. The force of gravity on massive objects in outer space is only this force multiplied by a multitude of magnitudes. The same subatomic scale force of gravity that keeps a hydrogen nucleus together and that holds its electron in orbit around it is that which holds the planets together and that keeps them in their orbits around the sun. What is a relatively small amount of potential energy holding together an atom is minuscule beside the amount of tachyons in a field that are required to distort the course of a light ray around a celestial object. However, tachyonic hyperspace is, speculatively, a wholly universal field that extends beyond light speed and that also underlies all matter-energy reactions in our local continuum. So it could be said of this universal field of the gravitational force that it is ubiquitous in its effect on all size scales. That is, that it has the same effect within atoms as within solar systems, regardless of their scale of size, and despite seemingly employing vastly different quantities of potential energy to do so. First, let us say you are truly stationary at frame of reference K. In all reality, nothing is truly inert. But let us assume this to be false a moment and say that your position is motionless in space over time. Next, let us say, at some distance over duration away, at location K1 in space-time, there is stellar event X, let's say, a massive solar flare engulfing a habitable zone planet and exterminating a nearly type 1 civilization, occurring at time Y. Let's say December 21st, 2012 AD Gregorian. Let the space-time interval between your location and this event over time be defined by Z times T divided by C, where Z is a distance, T a duration, and C the fixed constant speed of light. In all reality, no photon travels forever at just this fixed constant speed, 
But let us assume this to be false a moment and say that light speed is a stable fixed constant. Finally, let us also assume that from your inert stationary location at k relative to the event at k1, there is an exact, direct, and unobstructed line of sight for a photon to travel along from k1 to k, or vice versa. We know that if the distance metric, the difference in space between k and k1, and the constant speed of light, the measuring rod being applied, are both positive real numbers greater than zero, then the time metric, the result of rods per difference, must also amount to a positive real number. However, if the time metric is zero or negative, thus arriving before you leave, then either z, the distance metric, or c, the constant speed of light, must also be either zero or negative. A situation wherein any of these sums is zero results in a total interval between k and k1 of zero, and this means instant fatality for an observer at inert location k. A situation in which any of these sums is negative results in a condition wherein c is not absolute, but relative. For example, a situation under the condition that the distance metric is negative means that k is a distance from k1 that is relative to c being negative. What does it mean for c to be negative? It describes a condition of radiation that is FTL, faster than light speed. Thus, if you were to see event X at time Y in K1 from frame K at distance Z by FTL speeds, you would be able to see the event end before it could be seen to begin by someone else at K, who could only see by light speed. Likewise, if you were to travel the distance Z from K to K1 at such an FTL speed, but still only see the event x at time y occurring at light speed, you would see the event x at time y occurring in reverse, wherein y takes on a negative sign.